when I hanged up the rope and I put it around my neck and I stood on the chair. This was two years, I had two years left and I looked down and I'm about to do it. Mental health hurts, you know, it kicks into anyone, no matter who you are, big or bad. I looked down, I was gonna do it, but then I took it off. I said, think about God, you're gonna go straight to hell and think about your mother. So basically I was born in Chelsea, Chelsea Hospital. But my father came from Iraq, literally as a refugee. He came over to here to give us a better life, etc. But at the age of seven, he passed away, you know, and my mother was left with three children to look after and I was the eldest. So due to this situation, my mother had to go back to her family back in Iran. She needed some support to raise us for a bit and she felt like this was the way to do it. But realistically, in reality, that was the, one of the worst decisions she could have made. Because the minute we went back there, her family set us up. They ripped up our passports and everything. They did not want us to go back. They said, you're staying here. Because in our religion, if the woman hasn't got a husband and stuff here, the only reason why they let her go is because she married my dad. And now he's passed away. They thought they could take matters in their own hands by doing that. She managed to save her, her passport to go back to um, London to get our, sort our ones out, to come back and bring us back. In that time, it took a year and a half. And a lot of things happened in that year and a half, which we're gonna be talking about. One of the main things that has never left my head is when I was seven, I was literally in the area, everyone knew we was from London and they thought we had money, et cetera, when it was the complete opposite. So a group of people came, kidnapped me, threw me in the back of their car, and literally was attempting to sell my insides for money. I was, alhamdulillah, praises be to God, I was only there for two days with them. It wasn't a long process. They did not know who my uncle was. My uncle was very known in that area. In that two days, I'll be honest, I got beat. Like, I got a dent in my head. I got stabbed. They were torturing me. So let me get this straight, Rambo. So it was a case of you was taken away from your parents or your mom. Um, and you said they tried to, tried to take your insides out. Well, what was the situation? Basically, they was calling up our family, telling them if we don't pay a certain amount of money, they will sell my insides for money instead. Because they make money out of your organs over there. That's what the gang culture back in that country does. And they come from poverty, so they'll do anything to make money. In the reality, they didn't understand who they was doing this to. Like my, I don't want to be big, but my uncle was very known in the area. It was the fact that when they found out who he was, they just literally let me go outside and I had to go to hospital to get stitches, I had to get myself sorted. Bear in mind, I'm only seven years old, you know, and I've just lost my father. My mom's gone back to London. Yeah, it, was, it was crazy, it was a crazy experience. They literally put a dent in my head, how much times they kicked me on my head. I was sleeping majority of the two days. I don't have much memory of it, but it wasn't a good two days. Well, why was you taken again, sorry, in the, in the first place? Why, why are you? Because they knew we was from London. When they find out there's a, when they find out if you come from London, America, if you come from anywhere in, 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 in the West world, you're seen as money. You are a target instantly. So they took advantage of that and kidnapped me and thought, you know what, we're gonna make some money out of this guy. They got the drop. This was like three months being there. And that's what happened. And then what was next for your life? To be honest, after I went back, the struggles didn't end there. I had so many fights, like it was ridiculous. I had to defend myself so many times, I stood out. So going to school back in that country was not normal. The teachers used to whack us up like so badly. Like literally, like they would get the, the belts out, they'll get the long wood out, they cut my hair off, the kids didn't like me. Like it was just fights after fights after fights. I used to go home with my head bleeding or my nose broke. This mama got a little, like I used to get all the time. But to be fair, now when I went back to London when I was 11 years old, and I went back to the, the Western life, I had a different mindset to all these kids. I was a bit, you know? Things that I saw, so when, when I'm fighting in, basically I got kicked out of primary school for whacking a you in the head with a hammer. I'm only 12 years old, what am I doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? What am I doing? I, I ended up getting involved in gang, gang culture. I was from Wembley. You know, Wembley, we, we, we was a gang that had problems with everyone around us. We was like the opposite. So back in those days, we were following the Bloods and Crips, that bullshit. And we, we, we used to represent the red flag, the Bloods. And, Every area around us were Crips. Now, because of my experiences, I wasn't frightened of nothing and no one. And yeah, they called me Rambo. You're probably gonna ask in a minute, why did they call you Rambo? They called me Rambo for the simple reason that 
When we used to ride out, I used to go on my own. I never used to run. I've had, I've had a whap in my head, yeah? But this is why I believe when your time comes, your time comes. I had a whap in my head and he clipped it, but it, was, it got jammed, it didn't happen. And I managed to scuff him off and get away out of that situation. I've been chefed before. I've nearly lost my Rambo. life many times. So tell me about the story, about when someone had a gun to your head. So what was the incident? What was the situation? So it was basically gang, gang violence. It was with the other side. We had problems with them. They caught me lacking. They did catch me. I'm not gonna lie. They circled me, they catch me. They, they fro I was frozen at this point. Yeah, I wasn't scared of them. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't scared. But a gun is a gun at the end of the day. I am not Superman. I was literally hoping that he was bluffing and he pulled the trigger. He pulled it, but nothing came out of it. It jammed. It jammed quickly. We scuffled. I fought all five of them. I got away. I managed to escape out of that. But this is coming down to the simple fact that everything happens for a reason. It wasn't my time to go then. And how old was you at that point? I was like 15 at this stage. Still in school? Yeah, still in, literally at the end of my year 11. I was 15 years young. And then what was you, what was you doing with your life at this moment in time? I used to sell drugs. I used to sell weed for a living and sniff and all of that. But this is for the simple reason. Remember, my mom was a single mother. I'm the eldest. I had to bring money to the table. I had to do it for the family. I had no other choice, I'll be honest. I tried working on the side, it never worked. So growing up, that's literally all I knew how to make money. And Eve, the funny, you know what I've realized? The funny thing is, all the guys that were around me, none of them had fathers. We were all the same. It's like our batch was all the same. None of us had fathers. If, when I look around at everyone, no one had a father. So it's funny how all of us was together in the same position, doing the same stuff. You know what I'm trying to say? But the gang culture is not bad. I, even, I went to jail after, after all of this, but at the age of 24. So what, what happened in between the age of 15 to 24? So between the age of 15 and 24, my mentality grew a little bit better in regards to I was trying to reduce the violence and increase the money making. This is what I was trying to, but the problem is that will never happen. So the things that I've done to the people in the past, they're not gonna forget that, and they didn't. And all occasions, Riz, Things continued, it went down, you know? When you I say it went, tell me what, what was happening. Like there was many situations where, even my friend that's sitting outside right now, where we almost lost our life. We were at the age of 18 on my birthday in central London. Like central, we went out for my birthday, etc. We saw the group of people that we had problems with. It was literally 10 of them versus 10 of us. Royal Rumble. Everyone's licking each other, bottles in the head, etc. But you know, at the end of the day, like even when I went to jail, like all these murderers that I saw that was on my wing and these lifers, they all regretted everything that they done. Like everyone that, all the murderers in there said they wish they could go back to that day and retrack and not do what they do, you know? And alhamdulillah, I've, I've never killed no one. And I'm happy. It could have been many situations where that could have went down. But I never, I've never, I never done that. None of my people, some of my peoples have. My, one of my closest friends got 37 years. He got 37 years and he did not even commit the murder. He was around the people maybe, possibly, I don't know the ins and outs, but I know for a fact he didn't do it. He's got 37 years for a crime he didn't even do. Can you believe that? But this is the thing about gang culture. The police are watching you. The police know you're involved in this stuff. When something goes off, the fingers will be pointed at you. They need to cover it up, some way or somehow. Someone has to be done for it, for justice. My brother, he goes by the name of Yasin James, 37 years. He didn't do it. But all of us growing up, we had no choices. We never had no, had no fathers. We didn't have the choices that other, fam other kids did. So Rambo, if I'm, is, I guess a lot of people would say this, you can't just blame it not being to not having fathers, because I'm pretty sure there's many successful men out there 100%. Who, who have grown up with no fathers. Which is true. Which is true, but it's the area we got brought up in. No one taught us better. Let's be real, no one did teach us better. It took four years in jail for me to realize what was right and wrong. To realize there's many other ways to make money. It's not just drug dealing. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well legitly right now. I didn't, if I knew this before, I would have avoided all of that. But the simple fact that when I was a kid and I went through that stuff back home, it made me think differently to other kids. Like I was too violent. I don't know what was wrong with me. I always wanted to fight. I always wanted to take out my anger on someone. And when I was in the gang, I was like, yo, this is my time. And the people that I was fighting, I had no problems with. They never done nothing to me personally. I, I'm fighting for my friends, you know? And that's always the situation. 
That's always been the situation. Everyone's always fighting for someone. You're not really fighting for yourself. If you ask me all these people that I had mad things with, did I directly have a problem with them? No, I didn't. But I wanted a reason to do something. I wanted to release the anger within me. And I did it to these people. So you went to prison at what age? I was 24. And what was, what was the charge? And once again, it was for conspiracy leading role to supply crack, cocaine, and heroin. And you're going to laugh. I wasn't guilty for that. I'd done my time. It's not going to change it for me to say this. But God, my witness, I was not guilty for that. My friend was selling up in countryside. Me and him was like this. So my phone and his phone, every time he comes back, we're next to each other. They assumed I was the leading role of the conspiracy. When I stood up in court and told them, listen, guys, I sell weed and coke in London. Do me for that. Possession with intent to supply. Don't do me for no conspiracy leading role that I had no involvement in. You're trying to increase my bird. They didn't believe it. Four weeks back and forth from court. So you wake up in the morning, yeah? Six in the morning in your cell. You're going to the court cell. There's no nothing, no TV, nothing. You're there for the whole day. You go back to the wing. There's no one left outside. You're going back to your cell. So for four weeks back and forth, just to be found guilty for something I don't want guilty for. And I'm there. Who else, who goes in court and admits what they've done? I was standing there admitting everything. Look, I sell this, I sell that, but I am not guilty for that. So what's the difference of the charge they convicted you of to what you was guilty of? So you So conspiracy leading role is a higher category. It's a big charge. They started my starting point at four years. Where possession with tenant supply would have given me no more than two years do one. Or even community service. There's the difference, because it's my first strike. I've never ever been done for this before. You're meant to be lenient. Now my co-defendant, he's been jailed like four or five times. He got five years, I got eight. And it's my first strike. But they even portrayed me as the leader when I wasn't. But do you think, Rambo, because you've said those four years changed you? It did, Do you though. reckon that it could have been a blessing in disguise? It almost? was. This is what I'm saying. I, I, I see it. Because look, before I went to court to get sentenced, I opened, I'm a, I'm a Muslim. I opened up the Quran. I prayed to God. I said, please show me a verse in here. That will make me understand what's going on. I opened it. It said, God is the judge of all judges. And I'm thinking 14 years. This is what my solicitor is telling me. I got in there. The judge reduced it to eight years do four. And I, it has. I'm not, I'll be honest with you. It has in disguise. It has blessed me. And it has kept me away because I lost my boy. I lost my boy, you know. He got stabbed in his leg, yeah, literally two months before I came out of jail. He bled out and he died. Yeah. And this was all because of situations that me or others was involved. He defended me in a situation, yeah? And then years later, he, the same person got him back for it and he, and he passed. And how does that make you feel? I keep blaming myself to this day. Until this day, I blame myself. I can't forgive myself for it. But then at the end of the day, as a Muslim, you have to understand that when your time's written, it's written. I, I shouldn't be blaming myself. And I go to his grave every single week. There's not a week when I don't go and pray for him. I'm there for him. But like you just said earlier, was it a blessing in disguise? Yes, it was. Because that could have been me. It could have been other things could have happened. And to be honest, it made me a better man as well. Like my mindset and my decision making is completely different to how it was before. Before I thought I was Superman. I used to roll, I don't, I don't want to talk about it, but I thought I was invincible. I thought, yeah, I could never get caught. I would get away with everything, etc. Rare, rare, rare. Do what I want, when I want. But now that's not true. When did you realize that wasn't true? When I, when I went to jail. Do you know what? Do you know the funny thing is? I get a phone call. I, you know, I'm going to tell you a little story about why I went to jail. Yeah, this is the, you're going you're gonna to get goosebumps when you hear this. A week before I went to jail, I got caught with a bit of hash and a bit of weed. If, you can't, if you've been caught with this stuff before, you know you need to go to the police cells and you need to do some times in the cells before you go out for, for bail or whatever, yeah? In, 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 the, in, the, in the van on the way down, I'm praying to God, I'm saying, please God, I hate those cells. Please do this for me. Don't let me go to that cell. And I promise you, I'll pray my prayers every day because I didn't pray at these times. But if I don't pray my prayers, throw me jail. I get to the station, the sergeant looked at my name. He's like, no, 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 no. Get him out of here. We'll give him a court day another day. I said, what? I've been to the cells. You have to go in there for at least 12 hours before you leave. So my prayer got answered. I went home. I prayed first day, second day, third day, fourth day. Fifth day, I didn't pray. Sixth day, I get a call from my solicitor. You need to go for a voluntary interview. Your mate three months ago got arrested for drugs up in countryside. They want to speak to you. I said, if it's voluntary, I don't want to go. They're like, no, they're going to arrest you if you don't go. So it's better you go out your own back. I was like, all right, cool. I went there. I didn't see the day I light again. Imagine that. And I remember what the prayer I made to God. I said, if, I, if you get me out of this, I will pray every day. But if I don't pray every day, throw me in jail. He gave me exactly what I wanted both times. 
So yeah, what did you say a second ago? Was this a blessing in disguise? Of course it was. I made a deal with God. I didn't. He followed it. I didn't follow it. I was sent into something I didn't do four years. But you know what? I, it was meant to be. And then what was your life like and your mindset like when you... On the, actually, talk to me about the day of your release. What did you do? The first day when I got released, I went straight to Westfield. But the first thing I ate was wings. I did miss wings. I love... I, you see me? I love wings. I went straight to the chicken shop. I got wings. All my mates was there. They was at the gates. We went back to my mum's. My mum cooked food and stuff. So I didn't want to take the mick and go eat out. They wanted to eat out. So we, I brought all my friends over to mum. We had a little gathering. It was the best day of my life, to be honest. Best day of my life. To see, my mum was in tears. Like she went through a lot. She got so sick when I was in jail. She, she's on the verge of leaving me right now. She's gonna, she, she's very ill. She, and I did that to her. You know how much that fucks me, that makes me feel. I did that to her. She basically went through more struggles than I did and I was the one that was in jail. And I used to say to her, I was like, mum, I'm the one that's in jail. Why are you suffering so much? It's like, when you have a kid one day, you will understand. And she's right. My stepfather told me, he's like, you don't know how she was acting when you was in jail. She went cuckoo, like she wasn't normal. But you see how she's acting now? This is not how she was before. It's like, your mom, you put your mom through a lot. And I'm, I'm, I hope when my mom sees this, I'm mom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't my fault. It is my fault to a certain extent, correct. But it wasn't my fault to get that time, but it was written. Going back to your time in prison, Rambo, what was the worst memory that you've got from your time in prison? My worst, there's two, I'll explain two. One of my worst memories was when I hanged up the rope and I put it around my neck and I stood on the chair. This was two years, I had two years left and I looked down and I'm about to do it. Mental health hurts, you know, it kicks into anyone, who, no matter who you are, big or bad. I looked down, I was going to do it, but then I took it off. I said, think about God, you're going to go straight to hell and think about your mother. That's one. My second worst experience was when I got stabbed in my back. Yeah, I got a long mark on my back. I got stabbed in my back. But that was my fault. I had a fight with a brayer and I laid him out. Don't get me wrong, he was on the floor, finished. And I only stopped because I thought if I go further, he may pass. I've turned around and walked off to leave the cell. He's come from behind and gashed me. Yeah, but you know what, yeah? I healed the wound on my own. My cellmate was very good with pharmaceutical, he got honey and you got a leaf from the yard, you know, like a leaf from the tree. He put hot, he heated up the honey and I laid it on my belly and he said, trust me, this is better than stitching. And he's right. And I'll show, I'll show you the scar after, yeah? You'll see it's like a line, but there's no stitch marks on it. It's just a line like that. It healed. It hurt. <laughs> but because I'm not snitching. If I, if I, if I, if I they're going to look at the cameras, they're going to see it, rare, rare, rare. I'm not snitching. It's, it's, it's a scar that can be healed. I trusted my celly and he done me right. It hurt, not going to lie. There's many memories, bro, though, but I just explained to you, too. There's many shit that happened there, but I held myself. I never had... You see, the thing about me and Joe, my brother, I never, ever went out my way to look for trouble. I kept it humble because God teaches. If you keep it humble, when it's time to rumble, they will crumble. And I've always been like that. When it was time to rumble, I swear to God, ask anyone in the prison system about rumble. HMP Whalen, Stockton, Lewis, um, DCAT. No one can't say nothing bad about me. At all. There's nothing, no bad word. I had a fight on free flow once because of my little cousin. Do you know what free flow means? So free flow is when everyone goes to work and everyone mixes all the wings. This is when it goes off. I'm there sitting. I know this guy's going to come out. I don't know his face, but he knows mine. He broke my cousin's nose on the outside. So I knew we, apparently the talk was we're going to have a fight on free flow. So I'm there standing up on the wall, on my back on the wall, snow coming behind, waiting for someone to charge at me. Imagine that feeling. You're waiting for someone to come towards you to do you something. Literally, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I see a bulldozer looking you, just charging at me. Ba, 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 ba. I'm like, yeah, this is it. But I'm with one of my boys. I just met him, you know. He said he's got my back. You know what? Bless him. He did have my back. He's charging. I'm a boxer. I can fight. I thought they was going to bring shanks. I didn't bring a shank because if you get caught with that, I'm not going to land free flow, you'll get an extra sentence. So I was like, you know what? I fought shanks before. I've been slit here. I've been slit here. And I've managed to take it off them after this happened. He's come, he's charged at me, he tried to hook me. I've literally dodged the hook, gave him one. He stumbled that way. I didn't know he had a friend. His friend come and banged me in my face. So now I'm stuffling with, with his friend, cracked his friend's nose, thinking, where's this other guy? Because I'm not trusting my friend's word that he's going to have my back. But, but on the other hand, he's there with his rock and a sock laying him in on the floor. 
while I'm having my fight with this guy, if there was a blood pool on the floor, I split his nose. This was all for what? We could have spoke about this, you know? This could have all been spoken, but everyone wants to be the man in jail. Everyone wants to, after that fight, I'm not gonna lie, no one troubled me. Everyone saw the one bang that I hold here, everyone's licking my ass after that. And that's the thing about Joe, when you do a Mazda, everyone's licking your ass. It's funny, I swear to God. I hate how that works, but it's funny. The minute you do something to someone, yo, everyone's like, oh, yo, I saw that. Yo, yo, G, oh, my guy, right, 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 this and that. Oh, shut your mouth and grow up, bro. We're all in adult Joe. This is not YO. YO is youth offenders. They, they're more on it. They're more crazier. The adults are more calmer. The kids are more crazier. Was there any crazy individuals you met within prison? Oh, too many. <laughs> oh, there was too many. Crazy in what way, though? I guess in ways that you'll just never forget. There's a, a handful of them. The old men are, are funny. It's the old men. But do you know the lifers? The ones that are there for life. I really do feel sorry for them. Because some of them are... They're losing their head. They smoke too much spice. So, Rambo, tell me about your life after you come out of prison. How long have you been home? Been home nine months now. Just nine months, yeah? Yeah, I'm kind of fairly fresh. And the, you know what? Yeah, I am fresh right now. But it's been it's been a roller coaster already. What's it been you like? What's these nine months? Before been? I tell you that part, before I go into that, I just want to explain one thing about what happens, what happened to me in prison. Yeah, just one thing, because people need to know this. I had a fight with one of the gods. Yeah, he did not let me go shower to pray on Friday prayers. So I, 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 I he pushed me. I punched him. I've gone straight to the seg. Segregations where you have no bed. You no, know, there's a hard bed. No TV. No clock. You don't know what time of the day is. Now, two weeks have, no, before the two weeks have passed, you don't know the time. You see with screws, if you've hit them and you hurt them, you best hope they come for you and beat you up because you don't want the extra eight years. Do you know what I mean? They came to myself five up and they battered me and smoked me. Yeah, nose went, eyes, black eyes, bust tooth, not bust, um, bust lip. They destroyed me, but I wanted that, I'll be honest. I, I fought them, don't get me wrong, but I got battered. Yeah, they destroyed me. And I wanted that. I didn't want the extra years. I'd rather them come fight me and get over and done with. They left all my stuff in, in Wayland and they shipped me out to Stockton with nothing. And you know when you go to jails, you need your stuff. They shipped me out nothing, black and blue. Gone. After three weeks, they waited for me three weeks to heal up, even though I didn't heal properly. Gone. That's what they do, guys, by the way. If you fight a screw and they don't like you, they'll come back for you. But you do want them to come back for you because you rather that than the time. Your question now about coming out, I'll be honest with you, bro. The first six months was a very big struggle for me because I wasn't trying to sell drugs or nothing. I said, I promised God I would never go back there. But I had faith. The first four months, I managed, no one was giving me jobs, by the way. Criminal record, criminal record, criminal record. Everywhere, like I applied for everything. Like places I wouldn't even think I'd ever work in my life. Like degrading myself. All rejection, rejection. One of my family relatives, he has a state agency. He goes, I'll give you a job here. Let me teach you how to do the lettings and stuff, etc." cetera. I said, how much you paying me? A grand a month. For how many hours? Monday to Friday, 10 till 6. What? Take it or leave it. Why are you meant to be our family friend? You have any other options? Three months I worked there, he fired me. <laughs> Why he fired me? Because he's not getting enough money for his lettings. It's not because I ain't done wrong, he's fired me. So I'm there praying to God, telling God, listen, I'm struggling. My ex left me because I was broke. We were supposed to get married. Left me because I never had nothing going on. God blessed me with TikTok. <laughs> and I said to God, it's been great ever since. I have nothing to say about that. It's been great. I've got a good community, a good family, support me. We only bring positivity. I speak to people on there. I told the youth, don't do the things that I did. I give them examples. I do prison stories. I, I literally do all of this here. So the youth don't do what I do. I teach them about religion. I've got a good group of people that say to me, do you know how many messages I have on my phone? Because of you, I didn't want to end my life. Because of the positivity you bring, you, you've changed my views on things. Because of you, I'm close to religion. These are the things that make me keep going. Rambo, what would you say to this next generation? Because I feel like every time I interview someone, they always say the next generation's wild. You know what, yeah? They're wild in a weird way. Because like, for example, you've got these kids here running in shops and going into old people's houses and saying, we outside and all of that stuff, right, right, right. They're weird. In my generation, we were gangbangers. We were doing the most. So no, they're not that wild. I'll be honest. They're actually not. I don't, I don't believe so. Portion of them, yeah, they're wild. They're rolling with big rambos. They're thinking they're bad boys and stuff. Listen, if you're rolling with your rambos and you think you're a bad boy, watch when you go to jail and you cry like a baby. I didn't cry because I'm not the crying type, but you will cry. Trust me. Drop your knife and live a life. 
Live a life. Don't put yourself in that position because one wrong maneuver and you'll never see in the day of light again. One wrong maneuver. And remember what they say, live by the knife, die by the knife. You either got life to your own or you end up dead. I've got too much friends to prove to this. Rambo, could you tell me what the worst memory of your life is? Worst memory of my life? Worst memory of my life. Obviously when my father died. I remember that. I remember him walking down the stairs, um, hand on this ambulance late man, and he just gone. Disappeared, left us. That was my last memory of him, and I was seven. He just gone. Never saw him again. And the funny thing is, I found out years later, he didn't have to die. All they had to do was pump those, those tablets that he overdosed on, you know? They only had to do was pump his stomach, and they didn't. And there was a case on him and we were supposed to win it, but it backfired like, who cares about the money? We're not bothered about it. But the point is, yeah, he could have still been here. Do you know what I mean? How often would you say you think about that? I don't think about it much these days, I'll be honest. I'll be lying if I said I think about it, but it is one of the worst memories. And the other one is my mum trying to do the same thing that he did. She was on the floor, literally one time she wanted to give up and she kind of done the same. Her jaw locked, everything, foam in. I cried so much, I thought she left us. It's like, oh, she's done the same thing that my father did. But yeah, crazy life, eh? And if you had one wish, Rambo, what would that be? One wish? Go to heaven right now. This life's a test, it's not forever, guys. I believe I ask every, I guess, ex-gang member who's been involved in that life, would you say you're scared to die, Rambo? No, I'm, I'm not scared to die. I embrace death. No, maybe the old me, possibly. No, no, I'm not scared to die because I understand what, 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 where we stand in this world.